Second semi-final, Josil Bajkusiev, two very tight wins there over Bodsic. And Shokin, and here's Mohamed Cho of Great Britain, who's, uh, he had a very tight encounter, beating the Olympic champion in the quarter-final. I'll watch that bout uh, very closely. Cho scoring a head kick with just the seconds to go, five or six seconds to go. It is an absolutely brilliant performance. In fact, since um, Cho uh, started representing Great Britain, he's had a great time with it. He won in Manchester at the World Grand Prix Finals in 2013. And uh, was a losing semi finalist in Grand Prix number one at Suzu, China the first in 2014. Round. So, Mike, uh, obviously, you're, you're a British <laughs> coach, you're an international coach in uh, Great Britain, and uh, you know. You, you watch these British athletes with a little bit of interest, and uh, Cho really has come on the scene, you know, all guns blazing, hasn't he, for Great Britain? He's, he's dynamic, he's an exciting player to watch, he's a uh, great personality, he's a, you know, a breath of fresh air for the, uh, for, for the sport, you know, he's absolutely yeah. great. Lovely guy, and I remember in Manchester last year, his family were all in the stands, they, they were all lovely people, they, uh, they had a great day out, and um, you know, and he came in and did some commentary with us as well. And uh, he was absolutely superb, yes. very intelligent indeed. And uh, Cho, well, Cho, yes, he didn't score with that particular kick. He scored earlier on with a, a very early kick. And he's one 0 up here, and uh, Cho kicked over, and he'll receive a kyungo and accept that. And uh, his belt seems to have come a little bit undone here and hanging low. But uh, officials not calling up on that one. It's actually the style that he wears it. It is lucky that he's got away with it, to be honest. He should be checked up in the equipment checks. It is long. <laughs> it's a little bit long, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> certainly a trip hazard. <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the crane, which is the head hazard. So far, it's very uh, early on in this bout. And uh, the officials, uh, he's not going to be happy with this. This could be where we see a Kyungo either side here for both athletes not really attacking. They... They don't like this in Taekwondo, they need to see both players, both athletes really going for it. The thing is, even though they stood still, Oof. Oof, nearly up to the shoulder. Great flexibility from Cho. Remember, these are the men's heavyweights. And that's going to tie it up. Kyungo against Cho, and now we're one apiece. Yeah, even though they're, they're, they seem to be stood still, there's a lot of setting up of your opponents, little slight movements to try and um, entice them to do a kick so you can counter them the movements to try and distract them so you can create an opening. So even when the players are still, there's still lots of things going on. Yeah. They're, not, they're not switched off, they're not taking a breather, they're not taking a rest by any measure. Yeah. I did see somebody stick a tongue out at his opponent doing that earlier, just to try something different and put him off. I don't think it made a bit major difference. I can't say I just saw that, to be honest. And, uh... So, first period over and it's one apiece here. And, uh, well, we're talking about Cho, uh, you know, beating the Olympic champion in the quarter-final by 6-3. to three. That was an absolute cracker. Well, Bay Kusiev also, he beat uh, Dimitri Shok Shokin, who's uh, world-ranked in the 20s, and Shokin had beaten Cha Dong-min, world-ranked number three. So the world-ranked number three went out of uh, Bas Kusiev's quarter of the draw. Yeah, that, was, that definitely was a shock. Uh, Chad on Min, I think, was lots of people's favourites for today. Yep. Uh, outstanding career player. In fact, only Obama is uh, the man not here. World ranked number two, three, four and five, all in this competition. And uh, 
There's a couple of them not making it through. Cho, world rank number four. And here's period number two. I think Cho will be quite happy with this. The um, Uzbekistan's athletes' points have both come through Kyongo, so he's not actually scored on Cho. He's not given anything away in that sense. Cho is cautious, but he was also capable of that very fast head kick as well. Yeah. Which he used in both his qualifying matches. Use it quite late on in the game as well, just to make it a little bit more exciting for everybody. Yeah, Cho, a uh, little bit of a shrug of the shoulders there. I think he feels he, he missed an opportunity. As uh, Baikuziev was just a little bit prone in that corner. Goes in for the punch. Good punch. He celebrates it, but the officials, uh, I think there were two officials blindsided there. They have three officials. Uh, 60 degree at uh, corners of the court, 120 degrees. <laughs> My muscles never strong. Still one all, just less than a minute to go. And uh, unusually for the men's heavyweights, they're actually holding back a little bit here, Mike. Joe's a very cautious player. He's capable of that last minute headshot, and I think he's. I think he'd be very, very comfortable. I think he feels like he's in control. Yeah. Yeah, you enter the, the twilight zone of the last 10 seconds of the third period, and we saw it in the quarterfinal. Um, I watched that one very closely, and uh, it was it was three all, and Cho just planted in a head kick in the last 10 seconds, and the Olympic champion left the arena. And that's how strong this competition is. That the Olympic champion isn't in the top set of seeds. He was, uh, you know, he faced the world number four in the quarterfinal. The Taekwondo really is a very, some very strong uh, categories here. Entering the last ten seconds. This is the last semi-final, and so far it's been the one with probably the least action. They'll uh, they'll leave it at that. So one all after period one. No more score in period two. And uh, just having a look over at uh, Cho's corner there. Just, uh, you know, what do you think the coach is saying there, Mike? I think he's saying, you know, watch him be cautious as he's coming in, coming over the top there. He's probably also saying, look how smart I look in my shirt and tie. And Steve Jennings from Great Bridge. Yes. <laughs> Not somebody who's, I've known Steve since he was a child and I've never seen him <laughs> in a shirt and tie before. So What's happened to the GB tracksuit? I don't know what's going on. Well, the rules, the rules state the, the, the coach has been instructed he should wear the, uh, as the you know, wear smart shirt and tie. So uh, Steve's yeah. done that. Great Britain, we always comply with the rules. Yeah. Well, that's great to see. And uh, here's, here's the other coach. He's uh, getting quite animated here. You know, this is a, you've got to say, this is a really big chance here. You know, you've got, you know, world rank number eight. And he's through to a major semi-final, and a victory here is going to give him a big chunk of points. And just ask him to wipe down the hogu there, because when they've had a drink, they tend to get spill a little bit on the protector. Yeah, can cause a foot to slip off and make less impact. So they just wipe it down there. So here we go. Two minutes to go. One apiece. And. Well, you can be sure that both these athletes have got plenty of energy in them because we haven't seen a lot of big movements so far. Certainly Cho had quite an energetic uh, encounter in his quarter-final against Malfatta, the Olympic champion. Oh, he's hunting Cho's the head kick. High, yeah. So Cho, we've seen the, that double kick that he does. And it's, both kicks are capable of scoring, so he can pick two points very, very quickly. Sometimes it knocks him off balance, like he got Kyongo in the first round for it, but it's, it's his trademark double kick there, which is really good. And then obviously the headshot. Yeah. Off front leg or back leg. And he has, he has got a little bit of a, a size advantage over his uh, Uzbek opponent, and um, I think he can use that to close down quite well. Yeah. I'd be quite pleased. If I was, if I was coaching Cho now, I'd be feeling quite happy. Obviously, I'd like to see a few more points on the board, but I, f I feel that he's... Um, Quite comfortable here. Just coming into the last minute, and uh, well, will we we'll see one of them crack and make a move? Of course, it's one apiece. As now Kungo's out, and well, we're going to get a Kungo there. So, Baikusiev hits the floor, and one more Kungo. Cho will be very aware of that. If he can put his opponent down once more, later on.
don't think they're going to get a caution for not inactivity here at this rate. That's 30 seconds gone. Strong kick by Chill to the body. Trying to steal the point. Oh, goes in with a big punch. Well, he tried to get the punch earlier. Chill does score with punches. Yeah, <laughs> incredibly strong punches, but it's not impressing the judges today. Yep, eight seconds to go. Still one apiece. Oh, Cho gets the kick and a body shot. He goes down for Kyungo as well. And now five seconds to go. Cho's one ahead. He's defending this amazingly. Big shot in from Kusiev, <laughs> but Cho has taken it. 2-1. What a weird way to finish a Taekwondo bout that was. I think it was, uh, you know, it comes across as anticlimactic, but I think that was the a very well performed match. You know, save himself for the Frenchman in the final. He'd be pleased with that, he'd be confident. He always looked in control all the way through there, Joe, really. And both semi finals there going according to the um, seedings. So France, Great Britain in the final.